friends and family, this is Ms. Espinoza, and today we will be learning about differentiation. Now, the way that I like to begin every year is by providing this worksheet to the class. And what I do is that I start the three minute timer and I give the classroom three minutes to land from the star all the way to the tire center. And within these three minutes, I let them go through it. And then once they're done, I tell them, all right, now go look at your friends. What did you notice? And lo and behold, you'll have students who will have different ones and they'll be able to tell you once you guys meet back together, oh, I went through a different path. You may put it up on the board and the kids will be able to show you the path that they did. You can also show it on a document camera. Now, this is an activity that I think is very important and such an eye opener for students because what you will find is that you'll be able to explain to students and it's a great segue to show them that we all do not learn at the same place. We do not all start at the same place, but we have the same goal, which is to graduate. Um, they obviously were going to the tire center, but it's a great way to say, you know, we're trying to graduate to second grade or, you know, we're trying to graduate to middle school. You may find more complex um, maps if you need to for upper grades, but I think this is a great one that you can, you just have to find a map that has different paths that's not, you know, you may have to look. Now, this also leads me to the conversation with them of what it means. Now, differentiation is important because we all learn at different um, places and we're at different paces. Now, this way can maximize their growth. Um, I saw this one picture and it says, for a fair selection, everybody has to take the same exam. Please climb that tree. Now, this is a huge one for us as teachers to know that not all students are starting at the same thing. What this group of kids need will be very different from the other. And one of the focus that you always want to have is that with differentiation, you may have kids who may be able to count to 100. And then you have friends who cannot count to 10. And one of the things is that you don't want to frustrate the kids and put them in a position where they don't know it and or have or you're not challenging those friends who do know it. Now, this can translate to different things. So we're gonna look at upper grades reading. Now, this can be differentiated in different ways. So in this classroom for ELA, the, they have their whole group exposure, which are their 15 minutes or whatever time is allotted for whole group. And then they move into their exit tickets or their rotations. Now, for triangles, that you can use different names for triangles. It's high support in this classroom. Squares are friends who are on grade level and circles and diamonds are for your high flyers. Now, they all have their own exit ticket that is meant for their own level. Now, within this grouping, Mr. Slagle may pull a group and say, triangles come to the back and they will work on whatever their exit ticket is or they will work on whatever skill is necessary. While they're being pulled, squares and circles are working independently on their exit ticket. Maybe you are not technology savvy. Maybe you need something that is more concrete. One of your options can be pocket charts. Now, they have to be nothing fancy. Differentiation can be in the form of name, colors, and numbers, but also as simple as a pocket chart. The purpose of it is to make sure that kids understand their progression and where they need to go, what are their choices, what is the formation. And by doing this continuously, the kids will be getting better and better at understanding what their purpose of their, you know, their work is. Now, this right here is an ELA classroom for younger grades. So as you can see here, we have three different rotations. Now, my classroom is different now. Now we have four rotations, but the essentially we have group one, group two, group three. So what they will be doing is that we have multiple slide decks and the kids are gonna be moving from one station to the other. The 17 minute timer and as well as the song at the bottom, those are aligned and they, as soon as we, um, they're automatic, as soon as we log in and present, it'll play together. Now what will happen is that their rotation song is going to end at the 16 mark because it's a one minute rotation. And so that means that you will have 16 minutes in every station that these students will be. Now, once that timer starts, this is a great indicator for you as a teacher that you're gonna be pooling your group. And you have about roughly 15 minutes to do your small group. 
because 15 minutes are usually in younger grades allotted for whole group um, exposure. And then you have your 15, um, excuse me, your 45 minutes of actual, you know, on whatever they're working on their personal lives or anything. Now, this is something in my classroom which um, can look different from class to class. And in my classroom, I used colors. Um, in upper grades, you, again, you may use, you know, triangle, circle, squares. Now, I use colors. So my high support friends are going to be in my orange group. My high support friends, so high support and orange group are more friends who are working on their alphabet. My green group may be um, friends who know the alphabet, but they are now working on blending CVC words or blending um, letters together to form words. Now my on grade, grade level friends will be in blue and then my high flyers will be purple. And the way that these are brought in is that within these baskets, you will see different activities. Um, you may have for example, pie cleaners, and you may have letters on some beads, and the kids will each have their binder and they will form words with their beads. Looking at this right here, I group my friends in heterogeneously, which means that they are grouped by behavior. They are not grouped um, by skill because I want them to feel in control of their learning. And because they're working on the individualized plan, it gives them the chance to work on their work independently or partner group, depending on what station they're at. Because I do not want to put all my friends who are struggling with writing in a writing center and it will just cause chaos because they will not know what they're doing or it will not be where they need to be. So something that I do is that I put them all together who work well together or they work pal parallel with each other, but they don't play with each other. Here we have Julio and we have Ian, which will, we will use as an example. So as you can see, they are supposed to be in word work or ABC, depending. I just have a little sticker on their binder. The way that this will look is that because they're in word work, they will go to the actual bin that correlates with their color. Now, Julio here is an orange, so he is working on his alphabet. Here we have Ian, who may be working on something higher. Now, what we're doing here is that Julio is not, I don't normally do orange, by, orange folders because the point of having different colors is or in personalized learning or differentiation is that it's supposed to be fluid which means that Julio may move on up or we have friends who may have to catch up in different areas. Then Ian is gonna go to his purple bin and Julio is gonna go to his orange bin. Now here we have students can be grouped by behavior and rotation by skill. So then inside of their binder, you'll see Julio has his activity that he is working on, which is cutting out S and D or whatever letters that he's supposed to be working on. Now Ian may have, um, his own cycle word list within his binder that he needs to work on. Now, looking at this, we now have four small groups in math for upper grades. Now, grouping for small groups can be done daily. So you may, you're going to be pulling a group every day, but you may have from day to day, you may see that their exit ticket shows that this group needs to be working on something different, maybe pulling a student who does not fit that area. And this is all depending on their exit ticket or their checklist that you may use daily or weekly. According to this um, right here, this is a rotation for math workshop and they have their tasks that they may complete. Um, the car they may meet on the carpet, they may meet at, like in the back table. And then you also have your early finisher tasks that they may work on. You may assign to them activities on Dreambox as well as any other or Epic or anything that they will be using. And then that will be able to expose them to whatever material that they will need. They also must have their, their must do's, but then you also have your choices. And it's nice to give the students choices so that they feel in control. I would keep it to about a minimum of maybe two choices or maybe even three if we're feeling adventurous. Um, but this way the kids will be able to, because the goal is, you know, the reality is we have 15 minute rotations. We're trying to make it so that kids are able to work on it. And then at some point throughout the year, you may be able to incorporate another choice. 
Now, this is how it would look like in younger grades. Now, you have the same approach, which is the song and the timer are going to be going together automatically as soon as you press present. And once they're in that rotation, they're going to be able to work through them. Now, what comes with being having more rotations will be less time per rotation. So you want to be very strategic as to what the students are working on in their rotation. The same concept is that they are grouped by behavior, not by skill. And then this is providing them with the opportunity. Now, once you pull these groups, the like, excuse me, once these kids are in their rotations, you will pull your group you will be getting, and the goal is to not get the entire group that is in guided math. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be, when you're pulling your group, so you may do apples, come to Miss Espinoza. You may have one student from guided math. You may have a student from game, technology, or fluency. And then it's a little sprinkle of all of them, so not everybody is leaving a station. You will change it from day to day so that you're not um, taking those kids out from that rotation. So for example, if you're pulling apple, oranges, and then bananas um, on Monday, you may do Tuesday, you may do bananas, oranges, apples. You may change it depending. So that way the kids are always day, weekly are going to have exposure to that rotation. Now, the same process where the kids are working on an activity, but it is differentiated will be that you may tell the kids like, oh, um, they may have their color, just like they know with their bins, which they know that's their color, you may change it, it'll be very different. So you may say that apples, you guys are gonna be getting red, or, or you can even just say like, um, apples, you will be getting yellow, you know? And then that they'll know, they'll be able to get the activities or the papers that are in um, cardstock or Astro Bright paper that is in yellow that is being extra, but sometimes, you know, that could be what you want to do, or you can just put a sticker on it and tell the kids, look for your sticker. That's your sticker color that you're going to be activities you're going to get. Now, for example, in this one right here, so I always, this is a hundreds board puzzle activity. And what I do is that I laminate um, different hundreds boards in different colors. And I write their no just write a number on the back. So that way, if you have two reds, you won't be stuffing them all or you'll be mixing them. You'll have the numbers on the back to let you know this is three and this is 10. And then if you find a piece, you know exactly where it goes. So the way that this is differentiated is that you'll see that red group may have large chunks and they're all cut up puzzles and the kids are supposed to and they get another hundreds board that they put down and then they have to put the hundreds um, puzzle where it goes. Now for my high support friends, I'll do larger chunks. So it'll be a big chunk of a number um, sequence and then medium chunks will be, you know, medium to small chunks will be green. You'll even for small chunks, you can even do maybe instead of cutting out, you know, a different intricate um, thing, you may have like maybe singles um, or even doubles as a great one. And then for your yellow, you could do medium chunks. And then that way, the kids are all working on a skill, but it's like in different levels in their own way and capacity of being able to be challenged. And then this is great because then you may have your friends who may be up for a challenge and you can like just, and it's not this huge ordeal. And because they already know what their job is, it's really bringing in the sense of you're taking away where you're teaching them a whole new activity. The activity is the same. They know what to do, but now you're challenging them and the actual material. And I think that's what's so valuable because if you have a friend who is in large chunks, which is, you know, maybe orange, you may tell them like, you know what, why don't you go get yellow? Or you'll tell them on the side, yellow, you're, you're yellow. You take away anything. It's very quick. And they know that they're going to be getting yellow. Now, this is also another activity that you may use. Now, differentiation activities like these can be done with just adding less or more pictures. This can easily be you just print out a hundreds board. And you, if you have stickers, you can just put a bunch of stickers on here with more stickers on it means it's going to be more challenging. So those could be for your friends who more your high flyers or maybe your own grade level, whatever you want to challenge them with. And the way that you do it, it's like these silly animals or stickers are on top of a number. You have to figure out what number they're on. So for example, the turtle is on 24, the 
squirrel is on eight. And then this is a great way for them to be able to use it. And if you want to make your own recording sheet, you can just put a bunch of stickers, put a line, and you have an activity. You may um, put them in pocket protectors, or you may laminate them for longevity. And if you want an exit ticket, you may do a must do is to do an actual piece of paper so you can see how they're doing it and that holds them accountable, or you can trust them in the process and do it. One thing that you can do is to hold them accountable. You can tell the kid, you may assign, you know, if you're doing grouping, you may assign a student from that group and you can change it daily. You can change it weekly. That could be a classroom job for um, if you're willing to juggle that, you can even make it so that you can do it weekly. Um, Eker, you are going to be the group captain for the day and you're going to be the accountability ca captain. And then what that means is that you're going to, they're going to be in charge of making sure that their um, classmates or their peers that are in that rotation are completing their activity. And then you can set your criteria as to what that looks like. Now, for the fun part. So we're going to practice this. So this is a math center that you want to put in your classroom, but you want to differentiate it. Now, this is now where you have to think, how would you differentiate this activity? So this is where the game says that you have to roll two dice and then write the number and count on. Now, you, this is something that you can easily make yourself because you don't need to buy it or anything like that. But one thing that I would say is that I would strive to reach higher. So this one says roll two dice. What you could do, for example, if you had upper grades, you could do um, flashcards. And you can do, if you're working on, you know, for upper grades, you could do three digit numbers. So you can do 236. And the kids will have to, um, once they pull their card that says 236, they'll get their marker and they'll write 236 and they will have to count on. Um, if you're doing double digits, same process. If the number is 43, they're gonna write 43 in the circle or in the star, and then they're just gonna count on. Now, for your friends who are below grade level, you may, you instead of using two dice, you may give them one. And then what they will be doing is that they're gonna roll it. And if it's a five, they'll write down five and they will count on. If you don't have dice, then you can use flashcards still. And then you may do one, two, three, four, five. You can also do it with the dots if you want to challenge them in the sense where it's, if you wanna put 12 dots and they'll have to be able to count on, that's another challenge because not only are they gonna have to count the dots, they're gonna have to also write it and then count on. But this is um, just an introduction to a quick way that you can incorporate differentiation into your learning. Um, I take a true passion in making sure that students re are getting the exposure and the information that they need. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy to help out in any way. Um, if you guys need some ideas, I'm here for you guys. My name is Catherine Espinoza. My email is Catherine one dot espinoza at cms dot k12 dot nc dot us thank you so much and have a wonderful day